What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Loot Bros Podcast. I'm your host, Resident Daryl, and I got something special for you today. Guys, this is a special episode I recorded with our good friend and host of the Trophy Horse Podcast, Tricky Mick. Uh, this is going to be the first episode of a series I'm doing on my YouTube channel. Uh, it's going to be the Resident Daryl Podcast Live or Resident Daryl Live uh, for those who are jumping in when these things live stream this Friday. May the 10th at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, possibly 10 p.m. Eastern Time. We're shooting for nine. We'll see if the schedule's a lot. I'm going to have YouTube Sensation, the pick and preacher, on uh, as a live stream. We're going to go live on the YouTube. We're going to have a long conversation talking about video games, video game hunting, how you got in the space, our backgrounds, how similar they are. They're very, very similar. So we're going to be doing that this Friday. So what I wanted to do is to, I want to get in front of it and put the you know something else out there. Uh, ahead of time so that this podcast is live and the podcast feeds it'll go live on youtube when i say live you know it will go uh it'll be up on youtube later this week as i'm editing out a youtube video version of this conversation so i'm hoping you guys enjoy it it is me and tricky mick hanging out talking shop you guys know we've been good friends for a long time uh, he is instrumental in me getting really into the podcast space fully and he is you know probably responsible for all the nonsense you guys have heard all over the years had it not been for tricky reaching out uh, and including me on provengamer.com i don't know that i would have stretched my legs fully so here we go guys this is our episode of resident daryl live um check it out if you guys have not already go to the uh, resident daryl youtube channel we are almost and we're like 840-ish subscribers on there, getting closer and closer to 1,000. That means we will destroy all kinds of crusades. We're going to end it. We're going to destroy all those copies. Sorry, I was reading something, actually. Something from Whatnot. I got an affiliate opportunity. So we will see what that looks like. Guys, thank you. Go check out the links in the description below. Go check out Whatnot. Go check out Tricky Mick over at ProvenGamer.com. Trophy Horse, all that good stuff. And... We'll see you guys live on the YouTube this week. Thank you guys so much. Be sure to check out the Patreon. We're going to be expanding and changing the Patreon. Uh, once we hit 1,000 subscribers on YouTube, going to be a lot more perks for the patrons. So we'll see what happens. All right. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you all so much. We'll catch you. Hey, well, I mean, we're going to catch you right here, right now. Here it is. Sorry about that. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Resident Daryl Live. This will be the first of many uh, podcasts we're going to do for the YouTube. I'm going to grab my friends in the YouTube podcasting, reselling, video game collecting space. And occasionally we're going to get together and talk about the hobby that brings us all together. So I couldn't think of a better gentleman to join us for the first episode than my good friend, Tricky Mick. How are you doing? So you're saying I'm popping your cherry. And then immediately this <laughs> uh, episode has to be edited. <laughs> <laughs> you, you knew having me on <laughs> was a gamble in itself. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, yes. Yes. In fact, you are the first. Uh, so here's what we have going on. We've got a series of interviews slash conversations that are going to be streamed live to the YouTube. And I wanted to have something there that kind of like the here's the first one. Here's kind of what to expect. So today's format will be a little bit different from how it is moving forward. Uh, but for those of you guys who've been listening to the Loot Bros podcast for any amount of time, you'll be very familiar with the way that I'll be doing things. And what I'm trying to do, Tricky, just to give you a little uh, idea of, of the, you know, pull the curtain back, how the sausage is made, is I'm trying to merge the podcast and the um, YouTube channel, right? So this is the merging right here. It goes just like that. So, and basically what I want to do since, since we've changed so much on the loop bros and a lot of it is solo focused content, my kids and I have been putting a lot more time and effort into our YouTube channel. I want to just make them kind of almost one in the same. 
still put out the weekly podcast, still have the Patreon, uh, but then kind of merge it, maybe change the tiers up a little bit and then start bringing in and doing a little bit more live focused stuff on YouTube and then dropping it in the podcast feed. So that's kind of, it's kind of where we're going with things. And I thought that, Hey, I'll have the guy that really helped me get started on as my numero uno guest. So, uh, today's topic, I guess will be catching up with tricky Mick, kind of introducing who tricky Mick is to the uh, video game collectors and all the different people that follow us on YouTube because the audiences are different. Yes, they uh, are. And it's very cool. Uh, also, we're going to kind of talk about, you know, just uh, you know, the, the normal stuff, the pickups, the bolos and all that. And uh, you're a different style of gamer than I am. So you will definitely have some uh, some conversation on that. So uh, just to kind of ease us into it, Tricky, why don't you tell us uh, what you've been playing lately? Oh, wow. Uh, that's actually a very complicated question. Which <laughs> you don't think it would be uh, because... I my my mainstay game is I play the division two. I, mm. I go back to that over and over and over again. Um I think right now I've clocked over twenty two hundred hours in it. Okay. Um which if you do the math, it's like ninety six days of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Best days. <laughs> <laughs> um but currently I'm jumping around a, uh, a bunch of games. Uh, I'm trying to go back and get the platinum in God of War Ragnarok for the PS4. Trying to go back and get the platinum for Horizon Forbidden West on the PS4. Uh, I just got the platinum in Suicide Squad Killed the Justice League. I don't care what anybody says. That's actually a good game. You just have to give it a shot. Um, Again, like Gotham Knights, if you're going into it thinking it's an Arkham game, it's not an Arkham game. Play for what it is. Um, And then... Surprisingly, last night, I don't know why, but I started playing Disney Speedstorm. Interesting. Okay. I don't know why. It it was one of those things where I was just, uh, I was on my PS4, or my PS5, and I was just looking through games, something to play, because nothing is really grabbing my attention, because the division, like right now, they they have seasons, and every month, they break down the weeks into seasons. So, like, the first week of each chapter, so to speak, is you go after a target. Then the next week, they do what's called a league, in which they have challenges in, you know, doing these four missions on a speed run. And then there's two separate challenges. And then the following week is a global event. Also combined with the league. And then after that, it's another global event. So right now we're in that spot where we just did the target. Um, Ironically, this is the last chapter of the season. So we just got the finale and it's blowing everybody's mind. And I'm on every message board that I could find saying i told you guys this two years ago this is what was going to happen nobody wanted to believe me everybody thought i was an idiot everybody thought i was crazy and look at me now suck us <laughs> um so you're doing the i told you so tour oh yeah a hundred percent on everything um because it I, i'm i'm not saying this to brag in any way shape or form even though i'm gonna brag a little bit <laughs> when you play a game so much and you can literally and you you probably do this with the Resident Evil games you can literally speak the dialogue of the game by memory you start picking up on subtle clues okay something that the casual fan or somebody that's just playing the game to play the game is not going to pick up and I'm not saying I'm not going to say anything with the spoiler here because I'm, I'm not I'm not a spoily person, but three, four, I think maybe even five years ago, a certain events happened, and I right then and there I had this weird feeling that what we saw is not what really happened. Okay. And I laid out my theory 
uh, to my buddy Tross, who uh, I play the division with all the time. Shout out Tross. Shout out to Tross. Um, And he was like, that's an interesting theory, but this is why I disagree. And we, you know, and for all these years, I've had this debate and I've kept saying the same thing over and over and over again. I said, watch, this is going to happen. Blah, blah, blah. This is exactly why it's going to happen. And sure enough, Tuesday, when the, the last chapter fell, it happened. And every single person, I've, I've been on a tour. We just released a, um, a Patreon episode in which we uh, got with a YouTuber called Rogue Gold, okay. who does uh, primarily Division 2 content. Okay, so, so like he could be your best friend. So me and Tross, uh, well, I reached out to him and said, "Hey, do you want to come on, come on a Patreon episode where we talk about nothing but the division, talk about all the aspects, talk about the weapons, talk about every aspect of this game?" I said because, in all honesty, a lot of a lot of people, in my friend group, they don't play the division, so I can't throw these theories off. Right. I've gone so far, um, and I can show you here. I've gone so far as to buy the division books. That's nice. <laughs> okay. On my Kindle, which is right here, I have four books of the division. Nice. Nice. <laughs> and everybody's like, oh, you're getting crazy. But as it turns out, stuff that's happening in the game is starting to make mm-hmm. things in the book canon. Mm, okay. Okay. So they're really digging deep in that cross media lore. Right. So there are things I knew that you know, if you play if you ran the division with me, you'd get, but it, it really wouldn't click into you. Right, right. So uh we had Ro Gold on and I told at the end of that episode, I told Ro Gold, I said, This is my theory. And he even said you're crazy. That's never going to happen. Sure enough, Tricky was right. <laughs> Hashtag Tricky was right. Put it on the screen. So. Um, awesome. Yeah, so I, I've been playing that, but I've been struggling to find this week just something to play. Um, a little, little backstory. I don't want any like, stops or anything. This particular week, I just, uh, I've, I'm out of work because of a medical issue. Um, so I've been at home. And I've been bored. <laughs> you know, <Yeah. laughs> when, when you do content creation the way that I do, and again, I'm not bragging, you know, when you have a lot of downtime, you tend to want to make content. But the problem is, is who do I do content with? Like, yeah. there's only ch- so many TikTok videos. There's only so many YouTube videos. There's only so many, you know, hours I can stream with the division before I get bored. And not that I get bored with the game, but it's like I'm doing the same thing over and over again. Like, right. let me do something new to do content. So that was part of the reason why I found Dizzy Speedstorm last night. I was like, you know what? This is a game that I could play. It's Mario Kart, but better. Ah, <laughs> shots fired. <laughs> um, and it comes with the best thing ever. Trophies. That's all you need. So, so you don't get that Mario Kart. So sorry, Nintendo fans. It's yeah. just not having it. Not so having it. I the so I've been struggling, you know, to make content. I was like, uh, you know, I'm gonna play start play start playing Disney Space Home. Like I I'll, I'll go back and I'll play Horizon, but now I'm at the end of the game where it's just now I'm doing the collectible grind. So right. I've I've gotten a little bored with that. God of War. I'm at the point where I've beaten the game, just gotta do the collectible grind. And it's like I got no problem going to do that because I love the games, but this is the boring part of platinum hunting is right. going in and just recapping this, recapping that, going here, going there, going there. Like I know everything I got to do, but it's like I want to play something that you know stimulates me. Right, I feel that. I feel that. That's uh, you know, you and I, we got a long history of uh, collecting trophies and platinums and doing competitions and all kinds of stuff together. And I, I got to be honest, man, I've kind of fallen off of the platinum grind. Uh, not that I don't do it; it's that I bounce off during the collectible 
part. I mean, like, if you look, I didn't platinum God of War 2018. And I beat the game, absolutely loved it. It was a blast. But then when I had to do all the Odin's Ravens or whatever they are, and then I had to go beat the Valkyries or whatever, I was like, you know what? This is the part that's boring. I can just go play another game. See, the, and then I, I, I'll, agree, I'll agree with you, except for the Valkyries, because the Valkyries at least was a stimulating aspect because you you had to find the Valkyries, which, I mean, right. but the, the battles themselves kept you engaged. And I keep saying I'm going to go back and do it. I just haven't done it. Same thing with uh, Days Gone. Like, I love Days Gone. I had a, a blast with Days Gone. But once I beat that game and I had 50 hours into the into it, I was like, it's time to do something different. You know, let me move on to the next thing. And, um, you know, even with uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, I got the Platinum in Zero Dawn. And I loved it. I had 68, 69 hours in that game. And it was just an absolute blast. And then whenever I got Forbidden West, I didn't even, I put eight hours into it. I was like, you know what? I'll, I'll come back. It's more of the same, which is good. It's what I wanted. But I just, I don't know, man. I just, uh, <laughs> these big time sinks. I'm just like, you know what? I want to go for the platinum and I know what it's going to take and what's going to require. And then when I started, I'm like, ah, let's go to do, let's go do something shorter. Let's go, let's go knock out. And so my platinum, Hunting this year, I've got less than ten platinum so far. It's 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 pretty sad. I've gotten two this year, <laughs> so there you go. But you've gotten big ones though. Yeah, like, I I've got well, I mean, I've gotten more than uh, I've I've gotten a bunch of spam platinums, but that right, was right. that was just to shut my guys up on my show because <laughs> they can, had those numbers. <laughs> well, no, because they 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 like to point out that Sid is above me in platinums. Mm-hmm. What? I, I mean, I th- I said this on my show, so it's not like a big secret. Um, Sid is uh, responsible for a segment on the show called Sophie's Trophies. Right. So I opened up my PlayStation account to him. So what Sid did, the little turd he is, <laughs> he went in because, uh, I don't know if your listeners remember or even that they even know, me and you, we went a full year well, I went a full year. You didn't. I went a full year. <laughs> Without playing any spam. But during that year, I stocked up on spam. And I, I routinely would send you a picture going, this folder is getting bigger. And I, th- I, th- I think at one point I had over 600 spam games just waiting for 2023 to start. <laughs> Dude, what's funny is like uh, I didn't really go back down the spam rabbit hole. Like uh, I was popping them pretty regular. Now I've done a few, and we do this uh, yearly uh, trophy hunting competition called GTTSC. Right. A lot of Loot Bros listeners will they'll be very familiar with it because we talk about it pretty regular. Um, but so they'll have these like quests when you're doing your trophy hunting. And it's like, hey, um, obviously you're trying to get the most score. You're trying to get the rarest trophies because that's what puts you up the leaderboard. But also, you might have to spell a word for this week's um, for this week's challenge. That word might be like superstar or something like that, right? And so you have to get a trophy that has the first letter in each description or each trophy name for for each letter of that word to spell superstar. So it's right. like, oh my gosh. If you don't play cheap, easy, spam, quick games, you might be stuck for hours trying to find an S, a U, a P, you know what I'm saying? Like, right, right, so, right. So I, I do, I still pop a few of those here and there, you know, and then I'll do those um, interactive movies, those Wales interactive films, um, where they just give you, you know, video game prompts to you know, just choose your own adventure kind of thing. Right. And I still do some of those. Um but it's just really for me. It's been the time that I've been playing a lot of a lot of different games that I've been enjoying myself, and I've really been focusing on the PSP games that are on the PlayStation Premium subscription service. Right, right. You know, I just I love it, dude. Playing PSP games because I'm a huge. Everybody knows, especially for the YouTube, uh, I'm a PSP PS Vita collector. That's the, what I'm hunting most. We're hunting everything, to be honest. We've we've got a uh, Xbox 360 hunt going on. We've got the Connect Adventures Crusade going on. We've got uh, the uh, the general PSP, PSV to PS3 collections that we're working on. And so we're all over the place. But 
I love, I don't want to play them on PSP anymore because you don't get trophies. I just want to have them. I just want to, I just want those cases on my shelf. So getting to actually play these games on modern hardware with trophy support tricky. That's mind blowing. Yeah, absolutely. Did you play IQ? Um, Intelligent Cube on um I did. And then I got frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> um because uh backstory with IQ, I think uh the reason why you bring it up is because I was looking for that game for years after playing it on the demo disc, and it was a very, very rare game to find. It's expensive. And then I found it in a local store uh here in New York City. Uh, in Manhattan. Um, I'll, I'll give a shout out to the store. It's called Video Games in New York. Um, okay. if, you, if you go to any of the conventions or stuff like that, they normally have a booth there. Uh, they've been at E3, they've been at PAX, um, and they've been at a couple of the anime places. But they sell old retro stuff. Like You could literally go in there and buy an original NES, still in the original packaging, and they have it there. They have a TurboGrafx 16, all that stuff. So I went in there on a whim, and they had a used copy of the game. I'm like, okay, it's used, but at least I found it. Opened, uh, I asked to see it, they look at it, it's all scratched to hell. But if you remember, Daryl, back in that time, they had the black coating on the back. So even if it was scratched up, it was still playable. So I asked the guy, I said, okay, how much do you want for this? Thinking this guy's going to say like uh, $20, $30, maybe even 50 He wanted $160 for a used PS1 game that was all scratched up. Which is crazy because like, I'm looking right now and just on, on eBay, sold comps, right? Mm-hmm. Um, for you know, pre-owned, $49.95, free shipping, $49.99, and then brand new, still sealed, $199. So he was charging you essentially the brand new what will be considered the brand new price. Right. For a used game. And then uh now I can tell that guy to, he can suck it because you actually hooked me up. Um yeah. a friend a friend of yours had it and immediately uh, like you immediately reached out to me and said, Hey, my friend's selling IQ, it's open. Um I said, How much do you want for it? He said twenty dollars. I said sold. <laughs> Nice. Was it wasn't even a thought. It was like sold. And and now it's sitting right there. That's um, awesome. And now you could play I think you could play it on the uh PlayStation Classic as well. You know, I never got a classic, so I don't remember. But what I what what I love is the fact that when they port these games over, they're giving you PS4 and PS5 versions. So you're not only getting the game that you want to play, right? These old classics, but you're getting two trophy lists. If you choose to partake. Yeah. So I just platinumed resistance retribution. One of my favorite PSP games. I just freaking love that game. And, um, I just platinumed it on PS4 and I'm going to go back later on this year and do the PS5 version as well. And they added, I said, I think I said this to you the other day, we're doing a Patreon episode. Um, it's, they added DLC or, you know, like an, like an infected mode with extra trophies. And it's pretty cool that they're, these old games can get updates now. But here, you can add on to them. Here's the question. You think Heavily Sword will ever get trophies? You know... Because that's the I one game love, everybody wants trophies for. I agree. And I would love for Sony to take make trophies an, a priority. I don't think that they will. But who knows? Whenever they start... If they ever get to a point where they actually start putting like full versions, playable, downloadable versions on modern hardware... You know, because PS3, you still have to stream. Right. Even though, according to various sources, that there are native versions alive and kicking. Like, they got them. It's just that not every game is easy to do on PS3 because that cell um, that cell processor that they used. Yeah, so, and then once you open those floodgates, everybody's like, oh, well, where's this game? Where's that game? And if they can't port it, they yep. can't port it. Yep. So we'll we'll see what happens. Um, I don't believe. I don't know, man, because they're not. It's it's case by case too. So not every game that comes through the service gets trophy support. So like most of the Disney stuff does not. Uh, Resident Evil Dreader's Cut is a premium exclusive. Like you can't download it natively without the service. You can't buy it standalone. But they didn't put. You know, Capcom didn't put trophies in it. So maybe one day. The thing is with Resistance getting an update and getting additional trophies and getting like DLC, it is now 
confirmed and possible that these games can be updated and can and will be updated. Maybe not all of them. So we'll just kind of see for me, it's super exciting because this is something that I've been calling for for years. I wanted PSP and eventually Vita to be playable on modern hardware and, and especially using the portal. Cause I, I lay in the bed and play my portal. Well, the, the problem with the Vita, um, is the same problem they ran into with the Vita TV was the fact that certain games mm-hmm. are not playable with a controller because, touch, because of the touch. touch. Like mm-hmm. one of the, one of the biggest games that I wish, um, was the Pelly on the Vita TV was a uh, golden abyss. Yep. And it, I think that, you know, with some work, they can make it happen. I mean, you'd have to just reprogram your touch to your touch pad. Well, I think what they really need to do is just like make the sections that are unplayable, just make it auto auto pass, like yeah, auto solve. Yeah, because I remember so. in Golden Abyss, like one of the, one of the puzzles was you had to stick the Vita up to a light. Yep, so to, you can see through the paper. To, right. To the, yeah. You know it, it, that it, that kind it, of stuff. That's got to be just like okay, auto pass. Yep. It was very interesting, man. I, I really, I, I was just telling my son about that game the other day. He was asking me like, like, it was so funny on, and when we, I take him to school every day, pick him up every day and they'll ask me all the time, uh, just random questions. What is your favorite of this? What is your favorite of that? My kids are always asking me questions about my interests, which is fun. Like, uh, like they always want to know. And then they'll put these weird stipulations like, okay, you can't say X, Y, or Z. Now what's your favorite? What's your next favorite? Yeah, because your answer would always be Resident Evil. <laughs> yeah, they, they always say that. You can't say Resident Evil. What's your favorite? So um, it's funny, you know, and they were like, okay, so what's your favorite Vita game? Or what is the best Vita game? And I was like, I named, you know, four or five of them. I said, but I still think Golden Abyss is the best Vita game. It is the proof that you can have console quality games on the, on a handheld. And it was just a start to finish, just an amazing, amazing experience. So kind of circling back to the things that we're playing. Uh, I'm on an old school call of duty kick right now. All right. I've been, I've been, I just beat um, call of duty, modern warfare three on PS three. I beat it on veteran. Uh, I've got a glitch trophy tricky and it's driving me insane. Oh, I have beaten. Um, there's a trophy that says you got to beat uh, black Tuesday and hunter killer. Those are two levels. You got to beat them on veteran. All right. I've beaten them both a uh, complete, complete three times on veteran. And the trophy will not pop. So now I've got to do the old, either delete my save file, or I actually I'm probably just going to play it on a different console without that save file on there. Yeah, I had a, I had a, a glitch trophy in uh, Suicide Squad, uh, which was uh, you had to get, you had to put on three tier three of the mm-hmm. infamy sets, and apparently the second set of infamy does not trigger the trophy. So I so I had to go back to the original uh, game and grind that that out, Ugh. which was not that. Which I mean, that sounds bad, but it's the if you're pro- fun. It's fine, but it you know the, the, I, I, I'm not having fun playing these levels on veteran. <laughs> well, well, the problem is, is that the the enemies are damaged in a different way. So it was. It's a matter of. You know, I, I got all the tier three stuff with the as this first season with the the Joker, mm-hmm. and all my characters, all my Suicide Squad teammates, they're geared up with the Scarecrow Infamy set, which is designed to kill the Scarecrow infused enemies. When you go back to the original uh, game, those weapons don't work with the Bane infused enemies. Gotcha. So you have to now switch your gear up, which is not obviously not the best gear. But the problem is, is that I've worked so hard to build these enemies up. Like right now, uh, for example, Joker, I have the ability that if I kill somebody with a melee attack, I have a 75% chance of them dropping a grenade. Okay. My grenades are uh, Polka Dot Man themed. Did you see the new Suicide Squad movie? Uh, yeah. Okay, so basically I drop a grenade. If it, kill, if it hits one enemy, it's got a 50% chance 
to spread to another enemy within 20 meters. All right. And it, you know, it, it, it uh, dominoes. So if the next enemy gets hit, then the next, en- you know, the next enemy has a 50% chance of getting hit. So it spreads really quickly. But it goes in and out, too. So <coughs> I hit the first enemy. It spreads to the, you know, a 50% chance to spreads to the other enemies. So now when that enemy gets hit, he now has a 50% chance of spreading it. But then it goes back to the original enemy. So it kind of like dominoes. It boom, boom, boom. And it, it, the entire screen fills up with polka dots. Well, those grenades don't work with the bane infused enemies. So now mm. I so now I have to take you know a piece of gear off and switch it over to this, which is not that big of a deal, but when you're so used to playing a certain style with a certain weapon and now all of a sudden you gotta change your weapon up, it's it's just, it's a little bit of annoying. So I understand that. I feel that on a deep level. So <clears throat> I, I haven't touched um Suicide Squad. I did enjoy Gotham Knights. I know that even those two games are not even close to being similar. You know, same as like a regular Arkham game. But um but yeah, I, I definitely there was some gear infusion stuff in Gotham Knights. So and you uh you it was it was pretty good. So uh while you're doing that, I will go ahead and just kind of brush over some of the games that I've been playing. I like I said I've been playing Modern Warfare three. I've been playing Modern Warfare two on the PlayStation two, trying to just get those veteran trophies knocked out. Um, for the Loot Bros listeners, guys, we've been you know working through the annual uh, trophy rarity event uh, hosted by uh, uh, Gareth Davis. So I'm just uh, making sure I chip away at those. I would like to go for those platinums eventually. Uh, I did notice that the Spec Ops missions are very annoying. <laughs> MZ Nitro and I have been getting together and playing those, and they have been a little frustrating. Um, but you know, we'll see. We'll kind of keep grinding it out and and kind of see where I land on it. Like I said, I'd love to have these two platinums. But um, outside of that, uh, I've been playing some Fallout Shelter with the new Fallout show being so good. Oh, I, that you know, game! That game's so good. Popular. Do I know? Fallout Shelter is good. I I got the I got all those trophies. Okay, so d- tell me, is there like a specific build I should be focusing on for my the layout of my shelter? Because what I did, I'm just randomly placing stuff. Okay, so what I did just to keep everything organized mm-hmm. is each each thing you do, like the the power generator, the water treatment, right? The the diner, they all have letters associated to it. Okay, and they all spell, and it, when you get all of them, they spell out the word special. Oh, okay. So what I did was. I put the overseer's office in the top left underneath the vault door. Okay. Now, you're not going to be able to do this right at the start. Right, because you got to have 18 uh, dwellers to, to get the overseer. Right. Well, not even that, but you're what I'm about to describe, you're not going to be able to do. But okay. what I did was I did three levels of S, three levels of P, three levels of E, three levels of C, all the way down. Okay. And I put it left to right. So at the at by the time my entire shelter was built, I had five to the left of the elevator and six to the right, three levels each. The key to doing Fallout Shelter is the the uh the dwellers, they all have letters associated to them. Okay. So you want to put a dweller that specializes in S, you want to put them in the S room, which I think is the power generator. Okay, that makes sense. The other thing that you need to know um, is babies Mm -hmm. are a big factor in the game. I've had a lot of babies already. You you got to put like one guy in a room Mm -hmm. and his charisma has got to be like skyrocketed. Okay. And just let him go up there and Start knocking up five ladies at a time. And so, it, it, so, will you? If I put one dude and multiple ladies in there, will it make more babies, or is yeah, it just one and one he, and make another room one and one? He no, no. He will go and plant his Spread seed and <laughs> plant his seed in all five of them. Then, once they're pregnant, take them, 
put them in their specialty room. Okay. Whatever letters associated with them. All right. And then take another woman, put it up in the room <laughs> and just keep okay. making babies because that is what's going to make your dwellers grow the most. You will, you will get random dwellers in there. Also, you got to send people out into the wasteland. Okay. Um, once you get the overseer's office, you will have missions. But basically, you send somebody out into the wasteland with a gun, and you let them run for like 24 hours. Then you recall them, and they come back. And you just got to hope they don't die. And if they die, you got to pay for them back. Um. You will struggle with resources for the longest time. Uh, I'm struggling now, and that's why I don't have the overseer's office specifically because I'm using my resources to expand power diner and all that stuff. Don't I, my don't, my layout is a mess. Don't so upgrade I, the don't upgrade the rooms. Okay. Until you get like a a full floor, because what what a lot of what I think a lot of people don't understand is that. The you like the more rooms you open up, the more power that you use. Right, which I'm I, I learned that quickly. <laughs> so, but if you you know like I like I was saying, I have five rooms to the left of the elevator. I upgrade my diner. My diner is using more power, but my diner is not really given enough. Is not. Producing enough food to do the trade off. All right. So the idea is to get more power rooms, which will provide more power, but you don't upgrade the power rooms because then the power rooms are taking too too much power that they're able to produce. Okay. Okay. So spelling special with your rooms. So would it be? Can you do? Can you destroy rooms, remodel rooms, or should I just start a new? Block? No, you can. You can absolutely destroy rooms, but you get like a. I think it's like ten percent of what you pay for the room. Okay, that's fine. I just um, I did, I've, I've got a couple hours into the game now, and I just like I don't know. I don't. I'm starting to get where uh, I've, I've got enough rooms to where I, I start getting rats in the rooms. So I was like, well, dang, I need. I'm putting people in every room just so that the rats go away. Yeah, that's and, not that's not a big deal. Don't worry about that. That's okay. just, that's, that's I, the I visual roaches thing. Roaches can destroy your stuff too. So yeah, well, if you speed up the rooms, the rooms you know either could pass or fail, and if they fail, you either get attacked by roaches or the room sets on fire or whatnot. Gotcha. Um, set, I had some set on fire already. Yeah, and you you know occasionally raiders will break in. That's why I put uh uh in my quarters on the top. Mm -hmm. uh, I generally put, you know, a couple people up there with guns. Okay. Because they will, you know, that's the first room they're going to run to. So they could do the most damage. Um, even if, you know, they don't kill the Raiders. When the Raiders go to, down to the next room, it's a simpler fight for the people that are down there. So I would say like the first three floors is where you want to arm people with guns. Okay. That makes sense. And then, uh, you know, obviously keep track of your, uh, your wardrobes because your wardrobes could uh, boost your charisma or the SP. So, you know, uh, whatever letter it is, you know, you want to put that room in there. And then also, gotcha. and then eventually you're going to be able to uh, make training rooms. Okay. So, like, say one person's uh, a one on an S. You're going to be able to send them into a classroom in which they're going to go from a one to a 10 over time. Okay. Gotcha. That's so cool. even if you're lacking in a certain, uh, a certain letter, you can train them, but that's, you know, going to come in time. Cool. So I've been thinking, all right, so I've been playing this at night on the portal. Okay. I'm thinking this is my wind down at night. And, um, cause I know, I know what I do is I, I, I like to get on the portal and then I'll go, Oh, I want to play a crazy involved game. 
And then I play for 10, 15 minutes. I'm like, dude, I'm actually kind of tired because I'm laying down. Uh So this has actually been interesting because it's a resource management game. It looks amazing. All those bright colors on that portal screen, Tricky, it looks amazing on there. It's awesome. Uh, So that's that's kind of been my, uh, as I said, that's been my wind down game. And I'm kind of enjoying it. I didn't think I would. I played it for an hour or two before when it first came out. And I was like, ah, this ain't for me. But I think now it's for me. So, and last night I was watching Rambo um, First Blood Part Two <laughs> and playing the portal. So, <laughs> playing Fallout Shelter. So, I didn't want to watch any more episodes of Fallout because I want to pay attention to them. And right now, while I'm getting established in this game, I didn't want to be like not paying attention. So, I was like, oh, Rambo, I can, I can have that on that. How many episodes in Fallout are you now? I've only watched the first two. Ah, uh, when you get the four, let me know. Okay. Um, I, I'm not, this isn't going to spoil anything for you, but there's going to come a time um, that they're going to go to a supermarket, a super okay. duper mart. Okay. When they, when you get to that scene, just know that scene was literally filmed two blocks from my house. No, that's sick, dude. That's awesome. So, um, yeah, I'm actually, I'm enjoying it and I kind of want to get into the Fallout game. So I'm trying to wrap up these. Uh, Call of Duties to put Fallout 3 in, you know, because I want to play 3 before I play 4. So, and, I mean, and if you listen to the podcast before, guys, you know I've already I've already dabbled in these before, but never really gave them the old college try. So I'm, I'm going to be a little more intentional about them, especially with the show, because the show just oozes with charm, dude. I That show, like, the production value is perfect. It's so good. You know, they're, they're saying, and I don't know this for a fact because I didn't play the Fallout games, they're saying the show... Is more Fallout than the Fallout games are Fallout. Maybe. I will say this for all the Zack Snyder haters out there. This looks like a dang Zack Snyder freaking film. Oh, come on. <laughs> Dude, the the music, the colors, the freaking slow-mo. Yes, 100%. 100%. Did, did you just see the, the, the post I put in the, the group where it said the Batfleck was the worst Batman? Oh, my gosh, dude. I actually... Um, Reported that website for spam. <laughs> <laughs> and number one was Keaton. Yeah, I know, which is so stupid because you go back and watch those movies. They're not great. I love Batman 89. No, no, no. It, no, 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 no. Hold on. We're not talking about the quality of the movies. We're talking about no, who was no. the best Batman. Keaton was the best Batman. No, no, Keaton was not the best. Keaton was great. Keaton was number one until he was number two. Ben Affleck is the best, most comic. Absolutely not. Batman. Go, go even look. Don't even, you don't have to watch it. You don't have to read it. Go go check out Dark Knight Returns. Batfle- right. Bat- Batfleck kills somebody. Batman doesn't kill anybody. It immediately does, disqualifies dude. him. Keaton's got a bigger body count than, than Batfleck does. He didn't kill anybody in that movie. Yes, he did. He freaking killed the Joker. He did he not kill the Joker. The Joker. The building. He kills dudes in that in that freaking movie. Yes, he's. I think his body count's like 28. No, there, there's like there. Yes, there's a there's a website that monitored. Uh, I think Clooney actually has the the that, the, the that, smallest body count. Then I think I, I think I got to go to that website and report for spam. <laughs> yeah, Culture Geekly or Geekly Culture, whatever the freaking lame website you were. Yeah, you can thank me for that later. <laughs> I'll report you for spam, <laughs> uh, fake news, misinformation. I mean, I've I, I checked all the boxes. <laughs> So, all right, we only have a few more minutes because I've actually got to go get to work. But uh, what I wanted to do is I just kind of wanted to, uh, you know, for those people, because again, I'm merging the two, right? We're taking we're taking the Loot Bros podcast and the Resident Daryl uh, YouTube channel. And we're merging the two. So for those of you, those people out there who don't know who you are, Tricky, they don't know what you do, uh, get, tell them who you are, what you do, and where they can find your content. Uh, well, I... Own and operate provengamer.com, um, which is where you could find the podcast that I've done 619 episodes. Yeah. Very nice. Um, I haven't been on every one, single one of them, <laughs> but 619 episodes of uh, Trophy Wars, which is a PlayStation podcast. Um, it's obviously the best po- PlayStation podcast on the East Coast. Suck at Sacred Symbols. <laughs> He's on the East Coast now. <laughs> That's what I said. That's why I said suck it sick. Yeah. We're number one. Um I love Colin, but he, he's never mind. I I'm, I'm, I love, I love Colin. I'm a, I'm a big Um fan. but you can find that all at provegamer.com. You can find the podcast on all the podcast services. We are starting to um 
well, we started doing the show live on Twitch, uh, which is Twitch at twitch.tv backslash proven gamer um it does get released on youtube and uh snippets of those videos of of that video gets put on all the social medias the the twitter the tiki talkies the facebook's uh instagram all that stuff um but yeah we're doing a podcast for 12 years now uh 619 episodes um that's awesome it's a, it's a lot of work, man. I I I, I, I want to speak to say something that a, a lot of people who don't podcast don't really know. You know, a lot of people think, oh, you just you know you come together, you podcast, and you know that's all you do. The people that edit those shows, <laughs> the people that do the social media stuff like that. It's like when I edit a podcast now. I'm I'm editing a podcast. I'm watching a Netflix show. Um, playing a video game. You know, I'm doing multiple things at once, and like, yeah. it, it it it's very time consuming. Like, you guys hear like a two hour podcast. Somebody behind the scenes spent four or five hours editing that thing. Yep, getting the audio right, making sure this person's cough gets taken out. That person's. Uh, checking their email. This person's yeah. This person had to go number two in the middle of recording, so you had to wait for him. I mean, e- even this show, like Daryl's, uh, was uh, you know he-, he was rambling on a little bit because I had to take a phone call. <laughs> yeah. Well, technically, we're recording during normal work hours, so I'm over here fielding emails. <laughs> so it's 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 a lot of work to do a podcast. Like I, I love being able to do content creation, um, but. At the end of the day, it's like it's a lot of work, and a lot of people think, "Oh, you know, oh, you're doing a podcast twelve years, but you're just sitting behind a microphone talking." No, because even on this show, which is not even my show, I'm working for Daryl. I got there the go. I got the video going, you know. I got I'm recording the audio, and like I don't mind doing it. And it's not like I'm not complaining at all. What I'm saying is, is this work going on? Like, even when I'm a guest on somebody else's show, I'm still doing work. <laughs> same, the same thing too. Because when I'm a guest, I tend to run my software in the background. Um, you know, for years and years, I use ZenCaster. So a lot of times, I would be like, "Hey, if you want, I can record for you and just send you the audio, so it's all lined up timing wise, and you don't have to fight with it to do it yourself." So. Yeah, it's a it's it's always it's a thing. And the editing, people just don't understand the amount of time that goes into editing. Same thing oh. for YouTube. The YouTube videos take so much because <laughs> it's and precise. It, it's it's ridiculous. And for like a twenty minute video, it might, it might be an hour's worth of footage or more, and it might be four or five hours worth of editing. And then you know, like what's boring, what's what's good, like. And then like you get done. You want to you get you want to portray the person that you're dealing with because like. Sometimes people are say stupid stuff. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want you to look like a dummy. And, and then, oh, then you get done oh. doing all that editing and you go to watch it and you render the video. And then all of a sudden, like the audio is like a, a half second off. Yep. Yeah. And you're like, or what the, the hell fails. just happened? <laughs> the render fails 90% into it. Oh yeah. It's like you gotta do it again. Or my favorite is when you upload to YouTube and then there's an issue like, <laughs> Like this issue with YouTube is like, which that doesn't really happen that much anymore. But yeah, it's a, it's a thing, man. It's a thing. So how's a, how's the, I know you got stream on Sunday nights. Um, yeah. How's that going? I mean, um, it's good. Um, we're actually, I just started uh, doing audio design, uh, not audio design. I'm sorry. Um, graphic design. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm actually going to send you now because I don't want to show you, uh, uh, on the uh, video that we're recording, um, but I, I just designed a new layout. Okay, for the show, um, I think this is the one. Uh, I think that's the one. If not, that's uh, that's another thing too. When it comes to content creation, is like people who create, they end up wearing a lot of different hats that you didn't think about when you started. So it's like. Um, yeah, I'm I, I'm a podcaster. I'm an audio editor. I'm a video editor. <laughs> I'm a wannabe graphic designer. <laughs> it's like, oh, I do thumbnail designs now too. Thumbnails take. I, I, we were talking before we started recording. Thumbnails take, or at least for me, 
I, okay, let me back it up. I heard a guy, a, a content creator I like, say you should spend as much time on the thumbnail as you do on the editing of the video. Yep. And I was like, that's really, really like truthful that, that we, it works out that way because a lot of times like, I've been doing editing for so long and I've been podcasting for so long that like I, I kind of have a general idea. Even when I film, I try to film in segments where I'm like, okay, this will piece together well so I can just label it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, line up my pieces, cut out what I want, make sure there's no weird audio stuff, throw in my you know sold comps and stuff because a lot of times we cover you know, what game values are. Right. And, you know, I'm trying to make it you know, fun as well, not just like, oh, this is a bunch of nerds going and collecting video games. I try to make it fun. I try to make sure I emphasize the things because my, my kids and I have so much fun. Um, but all that to say, um, whenever you get everything going, you're like, oh, man, I need to. You know, I lost my train of thought. I just completely. <laughs> I, and and, and th- they also don't understand, like, how much money you put into, like, all your equipment, like yeah, si- that, sitting yeah. around me right now, without exaggeration, I probably put about ten grand into. Oh everything. yeah, oh yeah, you've done way. So you know, I've done. I've bought multiple PCs, multiple cameras, mm-hmm. multiple. I mean, all that stuff. It's 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 crazy. And you, then like it's you paint you all green, so you have a permanent green screen behind you. <laughs> yeah, apps to do. Um, um, thumbnails. You know, back in the day we used to do the Loot Bros podcast all in one room. I bought a sectional for us to all sit on, microphones, mm-hmm. mic stands so everyone could sit comfortably. And then when we decided we would start streaming, when we first started streaming for Proving Gamer, uh, I bought a, a table, you know, I bought the, whole, you know, all just kinds of stuff to like make it comfortable for us, you know? Which, you know, people don't think about like how much your chairs cost when you do this stuff. It's like ridiculous. You saw the so, green screen I bought you? It's fun. I do. I do. I do. <laughs> the the light bulbs are bad in it, but that's, you know, I, I just don't like now. I like when I set my office up. Okay. So like I've got like two, I had three, but I, I downsized. I got two monitors right here for, for content creation. And then I've got three monitors over here for my actual business. Mm-hmm. And so like, it's like a, like a wall of just uh, screens everywhere. Right. So that while what I do is like I'm doing mortgage stuff, I'm sitting here and here's my, I'm doing my social media blast. I'm doing my uh, applications. I'm doing my email chains. I'm doing my marketing stuff, whatever. And then I just turn over here and I add a few clips, you know, make a few snips. Then I make my next couple phone calls. So I kind of have like this little command center. I, I bought an L shaped desk just so I could kind of face one way for one job, one way for the other job. Uh, and I'm and it just, works. I will show you on the camera. This is mm-hmm. what my studio looks like. And there's there's more stuff to it now. <laughs> yep. <laughs> right. So it's 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 a fun hobby. It's definitely interesting. It's what, definitely not whenever we quit playing music yep. and I was like, what do I do with all this gear? You know what you want to find funny right now, Daryl? What's that? The green screen in the picture. It's, it's showing <laughs> through on your phone. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 that's funny so tricky we got five minutes left before i really do need to pull a hard stop so uh let me just kind of recap everything real quick guys i wanted to do a very laid back conversation where you and i come together just talk about games talk about kind of where we're at with with creating um and then i guess the plan moving forward i still have the loot bros podcast you still have trophy whores and then we come together and we tag team patreon content so if anyone listening to this or watching this is interested in those particular shows, go check out Trevi Horse, go check out Loot Bros. And, you know, if you see, if you want to support any one of the creators, go check out those Patreons. I know you do monthly content. I've got monthly content. I do a episode of the Resident Daryl podcast, which is my it was the Super Loop Bros. It was always supposed to be where me and the crew get together and have like a single topic that we go in depth on. But like it was always just me doing it. So I ended up just changing. It. I was like, you know, what? this is just going to be the Resident Daryl podcast because that's what it is. Those episodes, I'm actually going to pull from the Patreon and I'm going to just put up a static graphic because they're audio only. I'm going to put those on my YouTube channel. So after this episode, I'm going to backfill up, you know, put some content on there. And then the next guest that I have uh, is going to be the pick and preacher. So someone very similar to me, tricky. 
<laughs> uh, Will from PlayStation Ain't Dead said, "You got to have you checked this guy out yet?" And I was like, "I had never heard of him." I was like, "He said I think you'll like him." So I start watching his videos. And I'm like, "Oh, he's a he's a preacher, and he does YouTube hunting video games." Kind of reminds me of somebody I know. Uh, and then as I'm watching his content, he mentioned the fact that he was in a metal band, and I was like, "Wow." <laughs> <laughs> that kind of reminds me of somebody I know and he does his videos with his kids and he is an obscure game hunter and collector. He's doing the Sega Saturn. I'm doing PlayStation Vita. I'm like, man, we, this is in eerily similar. Somebody's got, you know, somebody's got to jump on the turbo graphics 16. Give that some hey, that, could be, that could be you. No, that could be you. I know you're a, you're, a, you're all digital these days. Yeah. Man. I'm all digital these days. I, 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 the, the, when I buy a collector's edition and they give me a, a, a physical copy of a game, my first priority is to sell somebody sell that it. physical copy <laughs> so I can buy it digitally. <laughs> I just missed my mouth and spilt my drink all over me. I saw. I saw. So, I, I, so, I, I wasn't going to call you out for it. Oh, it's all over me. It's all in my lap. looks like I peed. So check it out real quick. We're going to land the plane with this one. So today. All right. Well, actually, let me two things for anyone who's interested in the collecting side of things. And I'll try and editing post, you know, edit editing. Daryl might put up a, a graphic or two or a picture, but uh, to, yesterday I picked up two, two large lots of video game stuff, right? I got four Nintendo 64s. Supposedly two of them don't work. We'll see. I haven't dug into them when I was looking at them. They look really dirty inside. So it's possible. They just need to be a good, get a good cleaning. But I got uh, two Nintendo 64s that work, two Nintendo 64s that don't work, six controllers, all with loose thumbsticks. Um, so they, they're all probably not great. Um, a Wii U, a GameCube, and five bangers, right? I got Mario Party 5, Mario Party 6. Um, I got a Double Dash, Mario Kart Double Dash. I got Super Smash Bros. Melee. And then I got Super Monkey Ball 1 and 2. And then we plugged up the Wii U, and it had Super Smash Bros. Brawl. In Brawl on the Wii U? That's the Wii U one? Yeah. I have no idea. It smashed for the Wii U on, in, in the console. So that was like bonus game. That was awesome. And then today, I'm actually leaving here shortly um, to go pick up a giant Skylanders lot for my whatnot show. And I am making a trade. I'm actually trading. Uh, remember John Michael, old uh, Game Squat from the I, I, podcast I, back in the day. I try very hard to forget him. Well, I'm trading him a uh, all digital PS5 because I've upgraded everyone in the house to disc versions. So I'm trading him a digital PS5 for a large game lot. And that video, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I'm making a video on that one. I probably should. I might make a short for it but yeah so it's going to be some cool stuff in there so well, if, if he doesn't want the digital let me know i'm 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 looking for a digital for uh for my work playstation well he does he does want the digital so that was that was kind of why we're doing it i'm getting uh, part of the lot what i'm getting is a uh, the the white ps4 pro um i'm getting okay. a ps3 Stacks of games for both multiple controllers. Uh, there's some PS one stuff in the picture, but I couldn't see it. And then a little stack of switch games. So, all right. So it's a, it's a, it's a good solid deal. It's a good deal for him. Uh, Cause he wants to upgrade his wife to the PS five and he would do better with Wait, me. Somebody actually married that guy. Do what? Somebody yeah. Had, and he just had a baby. Congrats to him. I, you know what? You, you, it's like time to, to go. You, you didn't like the Terry Papa joke. I was not going to make that joke. <laughs> it, it, it's time to go. So, Tricky, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for watching. If you haven't yet, please consider like, share, subscribe, do all that stuff. Um, go check out all of the links in the description below. I'll put some of Tricky's links in there as well. I'm going to have links to our whatnot stuff. And we appreciate you guys. We'll catch you on the next one. Happy trophy hunting, guys. Animes for pervs. I thought you were going to slurp, so I kept the video going. No. <laughs> no.